Hey everyone, my name is Rob. Welcome back to the Movie Vault. We're back with another episode of Inside My Movie Collection. I'm delighted to be joined today by the hardest working man on YouTube, the king of pop culture. It's Heat from Serial Midnight. Hey, Heat. Hey, how's it going, Rob? Thanks for having me. This is awesome. Yeah, this is super. Thanks for, for doing this guest spot today. It's really great. Um, we're hopefully going to delve inside your movie collection. I know we've probably seen most of what you have already. But, Not even um, close. We might Not get we might get some cool uh, some cool stuff here. So you for sure, um, we'll we'll yeah. jump right in. Uh, first question: I, This might be a no brainer. I know you're pretty similar to me, but um, everyone knows I'll, I collect a little bit of everything. I think you're pretty similar. 4K Blu-ray, DVD, Laserdisc, VHS, vinyl tapes, CDs, film as well. It's all behind me. Um, you're pretty much dealing with all the same stuff, are you? Yeah, I don't have any film, but everything mm-hmm. else, yeah. Yeah, cool. Uh, so and I have, I do have, I pulled this. This has been in a video, but it's my, uh, my, th- this is a, what is this? Is this a, uh, it's a oh, VCD. Well. This is my VCD. It's still sealed. It's got like a, I don't know if this shows up, but oh, it's got it's a, a it's, it's yeah. sealed. It's still shrink wrapped. This is from, uh, it's a Cantonese dub. So I'm guessing this is the, the Chinese edition perhaps, but uh, this is my Phantom Menace VCD. And I always wanted to know, like what's in here because it's a bit, maybe it's, maybe there's, maybe it's two discs and there's like one up here and one up here. Yeah. But I'm like, is there a poster in here? Is there like, I just, I'm so curious, but I'm not going to open it because yeah. it's you'll, the, you'll uh, open it one day. Like when you're about 19, be like, Oh man, that was it. <laughs> it'll just be dust. There'll be nothing. It'll be rocks. Someone's yeah. replaced it with rocks and put a piece of tape across it. Madness, madness. It's um, JJ Abrams thing. It's the mystery box, you know, like it, yeah. it's, whatever's in there is is more the 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 wonder of whatever is in there is more exciting than what's actually in there yeah crazy um streaming stuff you're i know you've said it before you're not a big streamer brie is the one who does the streaming in the midnight household yeah pretty much yeah i mean i do sometimes we're streaming the mandalorian yeah that's cooking shows i mean that's really about it yeah, I'll, I'm I'm a sucker for the Netflix mortar stuff, so I'll kind of I'll duck in and out, and that's kind of yeah, the same as same as me. I'm not I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't stick with that stuff an awful lot. Yeah. Pro physical media. <laughs> that's right. Um, this is uh, this might be a difficult one, um, because I know you have a massive collection, but do you remember what the first movie was, or one of the earlier older movies that started off your collection? The first movie that I would say, what if I like you know as a kid we had we were an early adopter of Betamax and we had like Swiss family Robinson, but that wasn't mine. That was like my parents, the families, you know, the first movie that I think was mine is uh, the VHS for Batman. And you're, I mean, you're surrounded by Batman. So you've got the poster over there. This is not my original VHS. I don't know what happened to it, but when I started to, you know, I don't know if you did this, but when DVD took off, um, a lot of us were just clearing out our VHS. We're like, mm-hmm. we can sell these and finance the DVD collection. Yeah. And so all of my VHS is one. I did keep Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, but that was not my first VHS. It really started with this. And I would watch this all the time. I would watch this um, like on Saturdays or like in the summer, you know, I probably watched it 20 or 30 times one summer, just, you know, constantly. Yeah. Um, I think this is the early, I, I was trying to think, I was like, is there anything that was mine that was earlier than this? And I can't think of anything. I always credit Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves as being mm. like the movie that made me a movie fan Yeah. Um, on a deeper level. But that was after this. So yeah. I think it's this. That's cool. Yeah. I remember it's, it's yeah, same as you. We had, um, we had Betamax for a little while. Oh, there he is. Costner, the man. <laughs> <laughs> We had, um, we did, I remember when I was real little, we had be- a Betamax player and a couple of tapes for a while. And then we, we made the switch to VHS and um, I'm probably the same with you, stacks of blank tapes and everything taped off TV. That's kind of how it was. But mm-hmm. I did have Batman 89 um, and the version we had over here, I had a big box version, but the box was like yellow. The, it was a plastic yellow box, which I thought was super cool. And yeah, yeah they're the same as you. Yeah, they were all given into secondhand shop. Uh, when I made the jump to DVD, which was it's kind of unfortunate, but um, I'm going to show you, uh, I think actually you spoke about this recently in another video. Um, 
to, uh, I have older VHS in the collection here. Like I have Airwolf, the movie I think I showed before. I, I'm trying to change the picks every episode here because I don't want to yeah. bore people. I know I have shown this before, but you mentioned it earlier. The first DVD I ever bought, it was £40 Irish before Euro was in over here. I bought it before I even got the DVD player Blade. Yes. Yes. So that was expensive. a system seller. That was what it was yep. Blade and the Matrix, if I remember correctly. And yep. they were like, DVD, you guys, you don't have to rewind. And that was what, yes, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. You said it recently in a video. So that'll date when we're recording this, you know, breaking the, the fourth movie was wall. Huge, this, though. Do you remember up, how yeah. big that movie was? Oh, like, yeah. And I was somebody, I think I said on a live stream I done recently, like somebody had said to me, oh, Blade on 4K. And I'm like, uh, I don't know. I don't know about that. Like someone that was a fix man might look at it yeah. in 4K. But um, that was, I just wanted to show that real quick because another one I found, like this, um, you know, uh, not to say we're old, Heath, but people our age will remember these. We're but, older than some of the other film community. Yeah, people, just, sure. just a little, just a little. A little bit, um, yeah. Some people might not even recall these, but um, this was another really old one in my DVD collection, Starship Troopers. And what I want to mm-hmm. do here is, we'll know them as the flipper discs. So they were two-sided. So this yep. would blow some people's minds that you had to flip the disc halfway through the movie. Um, laser disc style <laughs> so um yeah yeah i just i don't know i think i may have shown a flipper before on the on the channel but um yeah starship troopers was a kind of a really old one and uh just to kind of let people know you had to flip the discs a while back the, ro- the uh the robin hood prince of thieves dvd Do, I, I went to vhs do you want me to talk about some dvd like i it's the same it was blade it was i think the matrix yeah. was matrix was my first i yeah. think that was my first dvd um but in the matrix you do not have to flip it was all okay. on one side, yeah. but Robin Hood, you had to flip Goodfellas. You had to flip. Right. Yeah. Um, and I remember when they came out with like the double layer technology, it was just like, what, yeah. what, is, what are you even talking game? about? <laughs> and it'd be that like gold, that bronzy gold color. Saving private Ryan was one yeah. of those. And it's just like, man, yeah. what tech, like, <laughs> it's so, it's so funny yeah. to think about now. Cause people, <laughs> You get it too, probably. People are like, DVDs are garbage. You're stupid <laughs> and they're old and they don't fill your screen. I'm like, yeah, maybe so. But yep. in That's 2000 and 1999 and 1998, it was like the yep. like, it was like aliens came from the future and they were like, here. Yeah. I love, I love watching back old TV shows. Like I got the, um, again, it, it's on DVD. I got the whole Sopranos DVD box set. It was marked incorrectly in a sale and I got the whole thing for like 25 euro or something over here in HMV. And I remember watching it, you know, and Tony Soprano is getting a laser disc player in. Like, this is the greatest thing. Like, man, and it's just so funny to look back. But yeah, it's interesting you say that about the flipper, about the flipper things. Because I think um, Starship Troopers and Blade were like 98, weren't they? Because I, ha- I also have yeah. Witches of Eastwick was, a, was one of the first ones I got as well with the old Warner Brothers snapper cases. Yep. And that was only a, that wasn't a flipper disc either. That was a single side. So it's kind hmm. of, um, it's kind of interesting stuff in the same year. Yeah. The way they were, they were doing that. Um, anyways, we'll jump on to the next one. Do you have a cool box set or a special edition you want to show us? Yeah, I do. So this is, I don't, only Patreon has seen this, I think. This is not a movie box set, but it yeah, is cool. a DVD box set. It's actually two box sets. And it's the, it's also the nerdiest thing that I own. Yeah. So I'm going to let that hang for a second while I, <laughs> while I get this. Like, what could it be? It is this, this is, this is one half. This is part one. These are ancient civilizations. Oh, this well. is part one. And here, here's part two, it's 52, 52 DVDs. This was a mail away subscription sort of a thing for different people did it. I, you know, here in, in America, we have uh, like the Discovery Channel and the Learning Channel and uh, National Geographic Channel, stuff like that. And that's what these were marketed like on and to. And that's where a lot of the programs come from. And so it's just like every one of these is a documentary from one of the um, history channels yeah. about a real place or a real people. So it's like, you know, the mystery of the pyramids and it's the Celts. Let's investigate the Celts. And then it would be um, like, let's see, um, Rome's lost city, uh, terracotta army secrets of the ancient dynasty, Athens, the crusades, mystery of the black mummy, the hidden city of Petra. And I, I got all the stuff on eBay. I did not do the subscription thing, but I got all this stuff on eBay. And each one of these 
has um so you've got the disc and then it has like a a, a book like a fact book oh cool See, i'm excited i'm not really nerdy yeah. about this i'm like and then there's a fact book and they then look like they're a hardback as well already like a hardback book yes kind of yeah absolutely they're they're like hard they're like books and then and then the back there's a quiz there's like a test <laughs> you can test yourself on what you've learned from the documentary and and the the book and stuff and i would do the tests so <laughs> No, I don't think anyone's ever seen that. I don't, I don't think I've no. talked about that. On oh, and each one came with a like a postcard. I think it came. It was a series of postcards. And when you were done, you got like the binder that you would fill the binder with all the with all the cards that came with the series. And so you have this this uh, whole series of um, it's. I mean, it's super nerdy. It's it's awesome. I'm a big history buff. So yeah. that's that's uh that's it that's what i thought would be a really interesting yeah no that's super cool because i know over here we have um like sometimes if we i guess maybe in the states you won't know like you know over here in england like we the food shop kind of tesco and they kind of sell little bits of everything else sometimes they have those kind of discovery yeah. channel like you know i've been a in a tesco of, sir have you oh uh-huh. <laughs> i apologize good sir <laughs> They um sometimes they kind of release those. It's like a Discovery Channel. You you would know them. He the kind of bigger looking. I don't actually have one here, but kind of like say A4 paper sized kind of you know turned sideways yeah. box sets. Um, and I have like one on like all these JFK mysteries or you know of a whole American presidents one and stuff. Yeah, I'm I'm super into those. I have like a a National Geographic like true crimes one as well. Like I have a few of them inside. Yeah, I don't I don't really get to talk about that stuff either. Yeah. Um, I have a. I thought I had to bring out the big guns today for this episode. So oh. bear with me. I have to kind of like one second. Okay. I got this in 2004. This is the 25th anniversary alien. Oh, wow. Ad, uh, thing. There's a little kind of plaque on there and I'm going to have to That's not awesome. drop it while I do this, but the, um, the head comes off and it's, this is a DVD. So all the discs are like in the head. <laughs> if that like works wow and um, which is super cool and um unfortunately with this one he i kind of i ended up double dipping because i bought the region one of the this is the alien quadrilogy wasn't that what the box set was called at the time yeah so safely safely <laughs> don't fall um yeah i got the region one quadri- quadrilogy box set at the time because uh you would not like the region one stuff would come out before over here region two so i would import them and then they bought out. They brought out the quadrilogy region two, and they're like, "Oh, by the way, it's in a big alien head." I'm like, "Oh man, I need that." <laughs> so, yeah, that's a cool. That's box. awesome. I, I don't. I think I've shown it once, maybe in a kind of you know the whole collection random tour going past. But yeah, I never get. I to gotta know. know how much that costs at retail. Originally. Um, oh, I want to say at like maybe one fifty. Oh, that's not so bad. There. Yeah, and. and yeah, I think if I recall correctly, it, it didn't even come in like a cool box. Like it was, I, I got mine out of HMV and I think it was just in a white cardboard box. Like there was nothing on the outside that says this is an awesome alien head. <laughs> like some, which is Maybe good. Maybe that was the stuff. not going to get stolen yeah. on the way home or, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's a cool one. Um, next one is, I guess it's kind of similar to the next question, but um, again, as you showed, it doesn't doesn't have to be um, like a movie related. It can be anything you want. Uh, do you have a most prized possession in your collection? Now I know you may so, have a few because I'm I kind of I have a lot of stuff. Yeah, and this is going to be really surprising too. I was talking to Bree about it, and I was like, "What do I really like? What?" I didn't know how to answer the question basically. And I was like, what would I say to this is the most prized possession? She's like, well, what would you grab if the house was on fire? What's the first thing that you would grab? And I was like, I don't Everything. know. I mean, it's all replaceable. <laughs> and she was like, what about your He-Man sets? And I was like, I was like, that's it. Because He-Man, it's not about, it's not necessarily about the content. It's about mm-hmm. the way that I was raised and not being allowed to watch He-Man. Mm-hmm. It created this forbidden fruit for me. And then when I was old enough and they reissued these on DVD for the first time, um, BCI Eclipse in, I think it was 2005. By the way, many of the people that worked on this now work for Mill Creek Entertainment. But um, the, the packaging designer, the, uh, we, this was covered in my Mill Creek interview, but like they all, all the spines line up to create a mural. Oh, nice. Which I don't think you can see. Maybe, can you see that? Is that the mural? Yeah, yeah we can just see it up there. At the top. Okay. Yeah. Um, the guy that's 
the, some of the people that were responsible for that are doing the Ultraman stuff, making the mural for that too. So they've just carried it over. But yeah. it, um, it, it was forbidden fruit for me. And I was, I was always like, you know, the kids on the playground would have He-Man and stuff and I never did. And, and so when I got to 25 or however old I was when this came out and I was like, I can buy this. And I kind of relived the childhood. Like I had some of that childhood that I never had. And so now because of that, this show is, I don't want to say an obsession, but it just means a whole lot more to me than it ever would have. It's just an 80s cartoon, but they made it something so much more. And so this would probably be my most prized possession, having the entire thing completed yeah. on the shelf. And, and what, because it represents, it took years to get it all too, because it's He-Man, it's New Adventures of He-Man, it's She-Ra, and... Um, it, it just holds a deeper level of like, it's like a second childhood. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. cool. Are you a fan of the Masters of the Universe movie as well? I am, yeah. I, yeah. yeah. I mean, I recognize, I see the, I see the flaws for sure. But <laughs> um, when we grew up, you know, growing up in that time, I mean, Dolph Lundgren was as cool as it got. He and he man. still is as cool as it gets. Yeah, absolutely. Um. Um, most prized possession I get you know once again guys I've shown like I have my uh, you you know my funny saying on the channel Heat. I'm a big fan of John Carpenter I nearly feel like I said I it every no video I had no idea oh really yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I have I have a like a four cassette tape signed box set thing um, I got uh, John signed I got it through his website so that's kind of like one of the main things but I kind of I know you like wrestling as well so I thought I would pull out some again I had to get the big guns for this one so I have a replica NWA oh. World Heavyweight title. And if I go this what? way, it's signed by the Nature Boy. Woo! Rick Flair. What? <laughs> yeah. Rick Flair, Flair for the gold, he signed. And he, he signed like 20 something of Torty. He signed Torty yeah. for like a, it was like an online store. I think it was like a wrestling store in the UK. And they were kind of like, we're selling these off. And you, you got the like the certificate to say he signed it and a picture of him signing the actual belt that they kind of included in this, in this package. But um, yeah, I, um, I, yeah, I That's know a, you're a fan of the wrestling and I have a lot of yes. replica belts. And, you know, again, it's kind of trying to find a place on the channel to talk about wrestling stuff. It doesn't always yeah. come up. So I was like, oh, I'll grab my uh, signed Nate uh, belt there and, and hold and it. For, for me, the NWA is like the best stuff ever. Like that's, oh, yeah. I, I would take that over WWF any day. NWA was awesome. Yeah. And that's kind of where, like in where I live, that's kind of the NWA territory. Like in the, yeah. in the American South, you Fair got like, country. yeah, it was, you know, Atlanta, uh, the, the Turner country, what would become like WCW and, mm -hmm. you know, Jim Crockett promotions, um, the mid South, mid South wrestling out of, um, the, you know tennessee memphis into uh, that whole territory Louisiana into and atlanta nwa territory really yeah. and all those guys man oh, that's my stuff that's i love that stuff yeah that's awesome. we never we never got and nwa was on like uh, a channel over here when i was little called like itv and then yeah. it kind of like went away and like sky would show wwf at the time um, and then Sky Credit went out of Ireland for a very long time. Like, and there was there was no way to get any wrestling. And then, you know, Sky kind of came back in. So I was definitely a WWF kid growing up. And I didn't come yeah. across NWA stuff till years later. I think I actually got um I got the kind of satellite system in. And then two weeks later, Vince bought WCW. So I got to see WCW for like two weeks. And other than buying the tapes like from the, the video shops, I had no idea what NWA or WCW was or, you know, or buying the but rest. You know, of a lot of those guys, those 80s, w, 80s and into the 90s, those WWF guys were NWA guys. Ted DiBiase mm -hmm. started, he was a Mid-South guy. Yep. Flair, you know, the, all those guys would do the territories and, uh, and kind of go around. Oh, Junkyard Dog started in uh, Mid-South. Yeah. Um, so they, a lot of them kind of graduated up to, and yeah. then of course it gets watered down for, I was, I was a WWF kid too, but I knew all those guys, like they, that Southern, I don't know, like Southern authenticity. Um, what's the guy, what's the, the free birds, the fabulous free birds. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, Michael Hayes, Michael and Hayes and stuff yeah. like that. <laughs> like that was yes pretty real. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's awesome. And um, we'll jump on to the next one. Um, I, again, apologies, guys. This will kind of date the video from when we're recording to like when it actually gets uploaded. So I, I can't mean, wait for that U.S. election to happen. Yeah, I wonder who's going to win. <laughs> I don't know. Um, what was the last movie you bought for your collection? 
Um, so I went with stuff like for this question, I went with, um, I've bought things that aren't here yet, Yeah. but this is technically the last thing that I bought. That was a movie that came in and it's this Harry Housen documentary called uh, special effects Titan oh, cool. It's from arrow Academy. And it's, um, like, I haven't watched it yet cause it just came in, but 2016 documentary, it's got, uh, John Lent. It's got John Landis in it. It's got Steven Spielberg. It's got, um, oh, there's a whole list right across the top. I should say, okay. <laughs> Peter Jackson, James Cameron, Steven Spielberg, Tim Burton, Guillermo del Toro, Joe Dante, John Landis, Terry Gilliam. Um, and I, I appreciated this was not advertised, but it's uh, that reversible artwork. So you can choose whichever oh, cool. cover art you like the most. So I'm really excited about this. This would have been a good one for the Halloween season, but it, it just dropped in price. And I was like, yeah. I'll have that. Thank you. Um, so the last one I bought, same as you, this is the last one that actually arrived was the Dawn of the Dead 4K from Second nice. Sight. I've yet to kind of, I'm halfway through watching one version of it. Um, so we'll, we'll get there in the end, you know. Very cool. That was, that was the last one. A lot uh, of people want to know about that. I mean, that's like... Yeah. That movie became so you're talking about forbidden fruit that mm-hmm. movie became this unbelievable holy grail for people and so now that's out and everybody's talking about it so yeah a quick, a, i know you do hot takes on stuff i'll give you a quick i am um, so there's three cuts of the movie right and then there's there's three uh there's like three cuts of the movie there's a bonus blu-ray disc and there's three kind of soundtrack cds and um, so i i went straight for there's a theatrical cut uh the cans cut and the Argento cut. I went straight for the cans cut and I was like, let's check this out. Um, I will have to compare. I don't have Dawn of the Dead on Blu-ray heat. I only, I have two really old DVDs, like a director's cut and then this, the standard. Um, I think, you know, the whole start of the movie where um, Galen Ross is that, is that her name? Uh, she's kind of in the TV studio and there's like a red wall. It looks really vibrant. I'll have to kind of compare to see about the colors. Um, 4K looks great. There's some audio issues on the can cut. Um, there's a mono mix, which I kind of found a little interesting because the DVDs I have have a 5.1 mix. So I don't know why there's only a mono mix. There's an audio commentary in there. Um, there was one little issue with the picture. Someone fires a gun on the screen and half goes black for some reason. Um, yeah, so I'm not too sure. I'll, uh, here's a quick hot take on Dawn of the Dead 4K. Oh, I've avoided any, anyone else's kind of reviews or anything like that. I just kind of... I, I don't want to get like tainted by someone else's yeah, review, yeah. you know. That's something so, you need. Um, like, let's just do thirty seconds on that. It's really important. There's a what are you doing? There's a cat, cat doing yeah. something <laughs> mischievous right here. Um, you as as creators as voices, it's so important that you not be influenced by other people's voices, and that's mm-hmm. harder than it's ever been. So, kudos to you for maintaining your uh, journalistic integrity on that until you've <laughs> until you've decided what you think on your own. Yeah. We'll see, uh, you know, and I don't, and I, it's hard, isn't it, sometimes reviewing stuff because we do get sent stuff and then you kind of feel bad when you don't like, yeah. you know, I, I, for the longest time I would say on reviews on my old channel, like, I didn't like this, but the bonus features saved this release, uh, you know, and I, I have to, I have to stop. You can be that. honest about things though, in a yeah. kind way, you can do it without being, you know, I, I don't know what your experience is. I, I my experience is that most of the people that I deal with are super passionate about this stuff and they're doing it because they love it. They're not doing it because it's like the cool trendy business of the year. Like if you're in physical media in 2020, you're dedicated to, to movie preservation. And so I feel like a lot of people, Hey, now the cat's like, <laughs> yep. Um, yes, but depends. you can be honest and be kind at the same time. You know, you can be mm-hmm. like, frankly it needs to be said because we reflect what other people think or what other people are going to notice and people need to know what some of the issues are on these things so they can make informed decisions and yeah, i can't okay. imagine anybody worth their salt would say well i'm not sending you anything else to review because you didn't you didn't like the lot you know yeah I'm i mean sure that, nobody kind of no one sets out to make a bad movie right everybody exactly goes right. in with the best of intentions so it's yeah. you know that's kind of how it is yep. um last movie that you watched each Again, being honest, um, not the one that I necessarily would have chosen to talk about, but uh, it was Scoob. Oh, cool. <laughs> and 
and I did not like it. <laughs> Hot take. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's not a good movie. It's it's no. it's. Have you seen this? No, I have not. Um, Do I want to? <laughs> no, you probably don't. I don't know. It's uh, they've taken Scooby Doo. They have made like everything we care about with Scooby Doo. Not in this movie. It's a superhero movie, and it's like we've got to stop. So Dick Dastardly is the bad guy. This I don't think that's a spoiler. He's like all he's on the back cover. Dick Dastardly from Wacky Races is the bad guy, and he's going to destroy the world by opening a portal to hell. Now that's not Scooby Doo. That's something, but that's not you know Scooby Doo is investigation, mysteries, haunted houses unmasking people and we finished the movie and brie was like well that would have been nice if they'd actually had some scooby-doo in it you know um and it's another one of these warner brothers movies yeah here is a hot take it's another one of these warner brothers movies that has no author author no singular voice you Mm -hmm. can't feel a writer behind it you can't feel a director behind it it's just scenes put together strung along and connected by the thinnest whatever um, and it is clearly made to capitalize on the super superhero boom. Mm. But instead of taking superheroes, you know, we got Birdman out there. We've got Space Ghost. We've got all these Hanna-Barbera superheroes that are under Warner Brothers library. Instead of taking those, they take Scooby-Doo and they're like, okay, they're not invested. The movie starts with paranormal investigation and the movie ends with paranormal investigation. The two of them together are maybe seven minutes of the movie. The rest of it is like, Scene. portal to hell and i'm like this is not this is not working so i didn't i didn't like it but it does have a lot of hanna barbera easter eggs which i really like i, I grew up a hanna barbera kid so there's like uh banana splits reference there's um like a some deep stuff too uh um what's the what's the it's like davy jones and this no 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 uh butch cassidy and the sundance kids right the the it's like a space one um jabber jaw there's like jabber jaw easter eggs and i'm like all right uh grape ape is in there there's like all this stuff so for easter eggs it was cool but the movie is uh it's it's bad yeah it's bad. Good as well. <laughs> madness my last one i watched we have um I know you guys over there have like the dollar store and uh, Dollar Tree and all those kind of things. And we have like kind of like something similar over here. It's called Deals with a Z. Deals. You know what I mean? Deals. Yeah. They sell kind of, um, they they clean up and reseal uh, Blu-rays and DVDs and sell them secondhand. So I nabbed this one for like two euro. This is uh, Studio Canal, the Stallone collection. Nice. I never saw I, Death Race 2000 and Lock Up and Cliffhanger in this. So I've seen Cliffhanger. I loved Cliffhanger as a kid. Yep. And I recently watched, the last two movies I watched was Death Race 2000 and Lock Up. And man, Death Race 2000 is something to behold. <laughs> it's yeah. A, it's absolutely. We have, um, oh my God, I'm even his, I'm blanking his name. Roger Corman uh, directs this one, doesn't he? Or, or uh, made this one. And um they're still making Death Race movies off of the success of that one. I was just going to say, I, I kind of recall running a remake on 35 mil, maybe like the 10, Jason 12 years Statham? That's... Yes. Oh, don't even start me on Statham, man. I, I can't stand that guy. That's but, right. Um... I'm Jason Statham. <laughs> Turkish is my name. That's right. But uh, Death Race, yeah, Death Race is crazy. It has, um, um oh my God, I'm blanking his name. Uh, Kill Bill. Um, Bill that will Kill Bill. Carradine, David Carradine. Carradine, yes. Carradine is like the main guy in this, isn't he? And he's in some weird kind of letter bondage. <laughs> of course. Yeah, what, like, wait, what, most of that time period in yeah. leather cod pieces and like, it's we- like shirtless or... <laughs> Yeah. yeah, absolutely crazy. And like Stallone's in there, and there, there's funny, you know, I guess is it like the the navigators are in the car with him? Like there's a blonde one, and she's kind of like, "Hey, slide, I love you." And he's, I don't even know what he's saying, man. It's just like it's, it's absolutely. He's, I am the law, as I think. Yeah. What he's oh, saying. that's what it was. was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and lock up. I watched lock up last night, um, and I was kind of like, okay, cool. Oh, I see, I really like lock up. Do you? I, do you know, I liked it, but I was kind of like, the start was kind of like, okay, he's out with his girlfriend and he's like, I'm going to work. And then he's like, like, wait, what? He escaped? And uh, the one thing kind of bothered me, I don't want to spoil in case people watching haven't seen, but like, what did he do? Why was he locked up in the first place, man? And how did he escape? That's my question. Yeah, I don't remember. I haven't seen it in a while. They don't tell us. 
No, they don't tell you at all. It's kind of like he's out and then he's, he says to the girlfriend, I have to go back to work. And he kind of walks back into the prison and he's kind of locked back up and then they take him off and Donald Sutherland is in this as well as the bad yeah. guy. But that's yeah. kind of, yeah, that's, that's as much as you're kind of told. <laughs> so. It's not important to the story. Yeah, it's, exactly. what happens in, in, it's what happens in the joint. That's Warner important. Brothers decided <laughs> get that out. <laughs> yeah. Um, next one up um, again this will date this for uh, any pre-orders or is there upcoming releases you're looking forward to oh um, I'm really looking forward to the 4k for total recall that's coming out um, in like a month actually no less than that and there's a new documentary on it uh, from Ballyhoo motion pictures about Carolco Carolco however you want to pronounce it the company that made that movie uh, and their like rise to stardom in that scene and i think it's an hour long and i'm really excited about that one um it's kind of winding down a lot of the stuff that i've been really excited about has come out now like i was really excited about the hammer set that we just got in america yeah in australia the imprint label hopefully i i I imagine by the time this video goes up i'll Mm -hmm. have covered these but as we're recording this i've just gotten a lot of the october imprint uh stuff and they just did a beautiful version of major dundee a charlton heston movie nice uh peck and paw and it's I, I i wish i had it here to show you it's in, it's incredible that was one that i was really looking forward to mm. um i'm trying to think like the the Colombian noir box sets from indicator look really cool but i don't know if i'm gonna buy those because well the, they're region locked and that's we can get around that but i think a lot of those movies are probably coming for my market in other ways i've noticed that like um other companies have like sony is doing a lot of that stuff like sony owns columbia and and um i think that they're they're putting out things in other markets and then restricting them only for those other markets so that they can put something out here too so yeah. it just makes me wonder if we've got something noiry I mean, November would have been a great time for it, but it didn't happen. Yeah, that sounds cool. Yeah. And I, you know, I'm a pre-order fiend sometimes. He, so I had to kind of, you know, I, I was kind of like stopping at a tree and then I kind of went to five at one point. And so um, one I'm actually kind of, again, again, this video goes up. I will probably have received these. You recently had a video on your channel. I'll link to that video as well, guys, because check it out. It's really interesting. You interviewed Lisa Downs, who has done the Life yes. After Flash and Life After the Navigator. Um, I literally like paused that video, went and ordered both and then came back to the video. Oh, that's awesome. So I'm waiting to get those. And um, I just left a comment saying I'll try and cover them as well on the channel at some point. So maybe that video will be up on my channel as well before this goes up. But yeah, um, yeah that's that's kind of one thing I'm really looking forward to checking those out because I was I was recently talking about um, I done a live stream on my channel. Uh, talking about 101 films the uk distributor and i just kind of i was i'll spotlight 10 or so movies and i was talking about runaway the tom Selleck 80s movie about the robots and i believe isn't joey kramer in runaway he's he's tom Selleck's son and yep. that yeah so he's um and, and i had no idea any of this was going on until i watched your video about that stuff so that's count, yeah. kind of sounds super interesting and um, so there are two i'm reading it's great too that documentary yeah. is so great like i it it's moving and it's I mean, you're gonna love you're gonna love Joey Kramer when it's over because yeah, he's just just raw. He's just as real as you can be. It's so good. Yeah, cool. Can't wait to check those out. And um, we're coming up. We've only a couple more questions here left, but we're nearly done. Um, favorite movie franchise or favorite series? Do you have one in particular? I know it's kind of hard to pick one sometimes. I'm so burned down on franchises right now, so this is a tough one. Um, I don't care if we add... here's here's hot takes. <laughs> I don't do this on purpose. It just comes okay. out. I'm innately grumpy. And I don't know, like you can cover it up sometimes. Like I, I don't, because I'm staying on a topic, I can be like, blah, blah, blah. But anytime I get free for him, I'm just like, he's grumpy. And like, yes, I am. <laughs> I don't ever need to see another James Bond movie. Like we okay. have enough. We're good on James Bond. We don't yeah. need more. And each one they make is worse. Like they're getting worse. And I'm not, I'm not excited about Rami Malek at all. Um, <laughs> and I am quite tired of superhero franchises mm. i think it's time to let let it cool off a little yeah. bit you've been it fairly was, open about that i think and i kind of agree they've had their run leave them it was great time. yeah we did it it was great like yeah. how are they gonna 
the event the avengers like the whole marvel mm-hmm. cinematic universe great stopping point why are you going to keep going like we yeah. ended it really well yeah i was What's just left to say, I've, I've never seen uh, I, I can't say i've never seen them i i bought all those marvel cinematic box sets in a sale earlier this year and i did run some of them as a projectionist so i've started at the start and um I think today is, isn't today Scorsese's birthday we're filming? I'm pretty sure it is. I'm not sure. Not a big fan of those things at I all. I haven't been online today. I've been, I've been I have Yeah, yeah. <laughs> been busy. I had some stuff going on, yeah. Busy in HQ, see her at midnight. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure I saw something on IMDb. It's Scorsese's birthday today, uh, the day we're filming this. And um, yeah, he's he's not a fan of those movies at all. But um, yeah, I just say- But you know goes. what he says, I actually agree with. If he- it, mm. He's right. In a lot of ways, I think he's right. I think like the Marvel stuff is kind of similar with the Lord of the Rings. I think you can't deny like their great filmmaking and stuff. Like what they've done with the Marvel stuff is fantastic over the what's like 20 odd movies or 20 movies. But like you said, yeah, maybe we need to just everyone calm down now. Leave it be. Here's how I would say it. It's a nice place to visit, but I wouldn't want to live there. And we live there all the time. They've that's all that comes out now for the most part. And if it's not that people don't want to go see it, the theaters are struggling because people only want to go see blockbuster movies for a lot of reasons, because ticket prices have gone up because it's just a bigger investment because of, uh, you know, we want spectacle return on investment, all these, I understand why, but they really have taken over the, the place of a lot of other kinds of movies that we used to get. And now we don't. So I enjoy them. But when I've seen, like, you know, after we saw um, Avengers Endgame, Mm -hmm. I was like, awesome. That was a really wonderful journey. I haven't watched it again. I don't know when I'll watch it again. I don't need to revisit it. Like, I did it. I saw it. It's not, it's, and I think that's, I think that's where Scorsese was kind of coming from, is that they're roller coaster rides, Mm -hmm. which they are. And they do have good character. Some of them have good character development in them, but they are not a substitution for cinema. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And that's in the least pretentious way to say that they're not, Mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're escapism. And we've lost a lot of the non-escapist kinds of movies. My pick, I'm going to go with this. This is escapism too. And you tell me if this fits in your, in your, in your rules, but I'm going to say it's the universal monsters. I feel like that's a franchise. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I have Um, that box set myself. Yep. Because, yeah, this was the one from um, the UK, I guess. This is the, yeah. wherever it's from. Uh, they, that whole, whatever, that whole um, uh, cycle from, well, I was going to say Dracula, but I guess we could go back a little earlier. But you know, Phantom of the Opera, all the way through, <sighs> I don't, Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein is very good. Mm. Abbott and Costello meet the mummy is a very low point for me it's yeah. very it's, and i feel like that's kind of like it goes out with a whimper but um there's like how many movies is in that i mean it's like 30 or something like it's a lot of movies yeah it's crazy um and they all feel similar now the ones from the 30s feel a little darker and more um grittier than some of the stuff in the 40s just because of the Hayes code and the decency police and stuff like that but i love those movies and i can watch the they never get old for me i never get tired of them they're always there they're always fresh for me yeah that's cool yeah absolutely agree um i have something for my franchise i guess you know we talked about earlier it's gonna be superheroes isn't it i'm gonna feel like a piece of crap (laughs) it's batman (laughs) oh batman he's he's exempt he's he's okay i have this might be hard to see so this is like um the first cinema I worked in, we had slide projectors, you know, that would had to go buy your popcorn and then you'd have trivia and stuff. I'm going to, hopefully this might work with my phone. It probably won't, but this is the Batman and Robin. Cinema. Oh yeah. Um, now terrible, terrible movie, but uh, yeah, this was in a little box of slides that I found and I'm just like, Batman, it's mine. <laughs> so I took it home and, and found it. I've, um, oh, you can't, yeah, I've a, bunch of batman trailers and the, the old prince soundtrack on cassette tape and stuff up there so i have um that's just one kind of batman thing i love batman all you know as terrible as some of the movies are he all watch them all and i have them all yeah their me problems too. yeah <laughs> we need them i kind of exempt them from what we're seeing right now i guess with the justice league stuff all the Zack snyder stuff that fits in there but mm. most of it doesn't mm. um 
you know, what you're talking about, like the, the Tim Burton stuff and the, what do you have? What's your favorite classic Batman movie? 89 has to be. Yeah. I kind of, is Keaton your Batman? He is my Batman. Yeah. yeah. I, kinda, I, but, I argue this many times that I think people our age, it's Keaton and um, Christian Bale is fantastic. And a lot of people like Ben Affleck as well, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, and the argument I hear for Batfleck is the bulk and the size of him is better than Keaton, but nah, there's, there's no beating Keaton. <laughs> that Keaton got in good shape for that. And what was interesting yeah. about that casting at the time is like kind of what made uh, Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man such a hit. And it was that you didn't expect it, but it did fit. Like Keaton is a dark man. Like he came mm-hmm. from comedy and stuff but he's a dark dude and he's super like if you ever see him in interviews especially now um like he's he's super intense he's an intimidating man yeah so i think it was good casting i also shout out to mask of the phantasm which i think is one of the best batman stories ever on film yeah cool and um, we coming up on the last two questions here um a book and a music recommendation do you have for us um can be movie related or they don't have to be this is a great book. This just came out um, a few months back and it's uh, the, the thesis of the book is that Chinatown was the last movie for classic Hollywood that after Chinatown that during, during and before Chinatown movies were made a certain way. They were made by, you know, producer, writer, uh, actors, you go do the thing, you get the okay for the money. And then th- even from the investment, the distribution, like everything was done this one way. And then Jaws comes along in 75 and it changes forever. And so the author makes a really interesting point that this was the last classic Hollywood movie. And he succeeds and he does, he convinces me um, that this was that last, that final, it's kind of the death of the auteur movement. It's the death of independent voices. It's the death of a certain kind of acting. And it, it's, I mean, man, they talk about everything. They, Cause of course, Chinatown is Polanski and mm-hmm. nobody wants to talk about Polanski now because of what mm-hmm. he did, but the movies exist and the talent exists and he, he did all these things and they get into his head and like how the Sharon Tate murder influenced everything that he did afterwards from the relationship, the underage relationships, everything he was chasing, the the scripts that he chose, how all of this was related to the Tate murder. And um, it's an amazing book. They even talk about how, you know, Nicholson was such an actor's actor and like he wouldn't do press. Like he wouldn't go on talk shows to, you know, pitch his movies. He was, he believed in the illusion of the crowd, you know, like we create this, we let it stand. We don't go talk about it. And then how over time he like, you know, five easy pieces, easy writer, Chinatown. And then into the eighties, he's making how, how basically money bought everybody and everybody kind of turned away from their ideals for bigger and bigger and bigger profits. And they're like, like two years out, I can't remember the dates, but it was like two years after Chinatown, he's asking for more money than anybody else in Hollywood. And he had used to believe in the, the purity of the art. And now he's chasing money. And then like, and then by the nineties, you know, which of Eastwick, whatever, all this stuff. And like, he's asking for this and his writer, he has to have a private trailer. He has to have, and it's like, it's just like, this was this purity that existed and it all ended with Chinatown. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful. It's tragic. It's heartbreaking. And I'll tell you the, I want to tell you the last line when we're done. I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but the way yeah. it ends, it's just like, oh, it just makes you want to go watch old movies. Yeah. That sounds really Great interesting. Book. Yeah. I'll have to check that one out. Um, I have my one over here. This is actually, I found this book in work um, in the projection booth. It was in like an old filing cabinet. So I was like, man, I have to get a copy of this for myself. So I got this off eBay for like a fiver. This is like Life Goes to the Movies. I don't know if you have I have that. I have that it. book. Yeah, it's awesome, isn't it? I've just kind of like, I've put some um, little things in here. So we have like a John Wayne section uh, just for people watching in case they don't know what this is. Everything because it's like 1976 or something like that, isn't Marilyn it? Monroe. There's a whole like a whole mess of stuff. Like there's some cool. Uh, what was this picture? Oh, Bob Hope and Bing Crosby as gangsters. There's just like 
there's just so much cool stuff um, from Life Magazine, I guess. Like, you know, they've just put yeah. it in the book. Yeah, so I, this, this was in work in a projection booth, and I was like, I'll get one of them for myself. And um, I got it for like a fiver off eBay. So um, yeah, nice. that, that, that's a recommendation, recommendation, a book recommendation for me. Um, music stuff, do you want to give any music recommendations or anything? I'm in, I'm, I'm off into weird territories with music. I mean, yeah. I, I can talk about it, but it, like, so I'm, I got uh, Hugo Montenegro doing covers of Stevie Wonder during this last record store day. And, and that's like this weird funk Hugo Montenegro, I think is most famously, he did like a remix, like a pop remix of the good, the bad and the ugly theme song in the sixties. Yeah. And so this is the seventies and he's covering Stevie wonder songs and it's like all synthesizers. There's no words. It's just synthesizers. It's real weird, but I like it. Mm. Um, I got cheap trick. Uh, it's, I can't remember the title of it, but it's 19. I, I have it right here on my phone. I can tell you, uh, got, got you live. I think is what it is. Cheap Trick, Out to Get You Live, 1977. That was, it's a, I think it's a never before released Cheap Trick live album. Yeah. Really digging that. I love, I'm, I'm really crazy about 70s Cheap Trick. Mm-hmm. Um, I got, this is interesting, but it's not necessarily good. Is there's an out, in the UK, copyright laws are a little bit different than they are here in the US. So there's like a lot of stuff that slips into the public domain that we can't legally access. But in the UK, there's like all these, like public domain collections really. And so there's this one that uh, it's called um, looking through a glass onion, the psychedelic songbook of the Beatles, 1966 to 1972 is what I think it is. Mm. And it's cover songs of Beatles, psychedelic songs. So there's like five versions of I'm the walrus. Right. There's like, <laughs> um, but it's interesting. I mean, deep purple is on there. Mm. Uh, the Hollies are on there. Like bands you wouldn't necessarily expect. Like Deep Purple does a great version of Help. Yeah. But then there's also a lot of stuff like one hit wonders, people you never heard, people that put all their money into recording like one single, like one A and B side single, mm-hmm. and then they're out. That's all they ever did. Yeah. And so there's a lot of that stuff on there too. And it's bad. And it reminds you like oh, only the Beatles could really do what the Beatles did. But yeah. it's an interesting experiment it's like an interesting thought experiment so that's that's what i've been listening to and i I, for those if that sounds interesting to people i recommend it check that out yep cool i have where did i put it um i picked this up a while ago i love this movie and i got this for like again ebay i got it for the fiver i love the artwork it's the blues brothers soul man a little 45 or seven inch whatever you want to call it um yeah, it's just cool. I love I love that song as well. I love the movie. Um, that's something uh, I've been listening to. Um, Foo Fighters. I've been listening to Foo Fighters a lot lately. I don't know. I kind of duck in and out of you know. I had the DJ business for a while, heat, so I'll, I'll listen to kind of anything really. Um, so <laughs> yeah. I'll I'm ducking in and out of stuff here, there, and everywhere. Um, last and final question, all on you. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. Um, do you want to give us three movie re- recommendations for your, from your collection? Anything you like at all? Sure. I try to pick some things that um, are a bit, I, I don't know if off the beaten path is the right word. I try to pick some things that people aren't talking about a lot. Yeah. Cool. And first would be Renegades. Have you seen this? this is Kiefer Sutherland, Lou Diamond Phillips. This is oh, a, I've heard of this. Yeah. it's a late, I think it's 1989. Yeah. It's 1989. It's basically a cop movie with two of the young guns. Mm. Um, and Jamie Gertz is in it from Lost Boys with Kiefer oh. Sutherland. So it's, that that brat pack sort of a thing um mm. and i mean i don't know what else is really left to say about it it's a cool cop movie uh music by michael Kamen, who's the guy that did the music for robin hood prince of thieves so that's a nice connection for me yeah um it's, it's a movie that i think here i'll show you i'll hold the back up so people can see yeah like sweet mustache on Kiefer sutherland that's a selling point but you know it's like one of these there's so many movies that for for all the talking that people in the movie community do there's a lot of movies that no one's talking about it's like they came out and then they're just gone um like this one here's my second one this is little foss and big halsey are you familiar with this no not at all (laughs) so it's robert redford and michael j pollard who was um oh he's in a lot of stuff what would you I, the episode Star Trek Miri, I think is the Star Trek episode. He's in, um, is it Scrooged? He's in Scrooged? Anyway. Now, I'm, anyway, Michael J. Pollard. He's a very distinct guy. He's, he's back here. This is Michael J. Pollard. Mm. Cool. It's um, 
kind of like a it's a it's a I was gonna say it's about motorcycles. It's not about motorcycles. It's about the people that ride the motorcycles. So like Robert, I should also say Lauren Hutton. I don't want to bury Lauren Hutton. She's in this too. She's really great. But yeah, it's Redford doing 1970. It's Redford doing that easy rider kind of a wandering um post hippie sort of a thing but he's so arrogant he's not a good guy that's the thing is he's not a good guy and the his trademark he's got like a toothbrush and throughout the whole movie he's just like brushing his teeth just dry like they'll just be talking to somebody and be like all right he just starts brushing his teeth it's just this little affectation that he's so arrogant he's so worried about his teeth that he's brought this with him um the biggest selling point in the movie is the soundtrack is done by johnny cash Oh, cool. So original music by Johnny Cash. In fact, I have the Johnny Cash uh, CD box set, the, the Columbia, it's like 70 albums. or Maybe it's 50. Anyway, it's a lot of albums. And that's in there is the Johnny Cash, uh, Little Foss and Big Halsey soundtrack. It's a great song. People could go YouTube it right now. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the title track, Little Foss and Big Halsey is by Johnny Cash. Um, that's a really cool movie nobody talks about. And then the last one, we used to talk about it. And this is another movie that, does it basically doesn't exist anymore moonwalker michael jackson yes this is my blue right now you guys might have easy access to this over where you're at but this never came out uh this is warner brothers uk this this particular blu-ray we never got this on blu-ray i don't even think we got a dvd release of this i think this was a vhs and then it was just like poof. because he's such a controversial figure i guess i don't know why yeah um isn't there a scorsese connection to this movie as well i feel like um there could be, yeah. I know, I know I have a DVD copy of it, Heath, and it, okay. it was hard to find for a while, and I think yeah. eventually kind of got it, got it through eBay or somewhere, yeah. I mean, it's weird. Again, it's not necessarily good, but it's fun, and it's worth watching, and it's got, like, different vignettes. I mean, it's what you would expect from, like, hey, let's, let's take a movie with Michael Jackson, just put all these pieces in it. So this is where the smooth criminal thing comes from, where they're, you know, it's like, like that's all from here. Um, there's a bunch of, a uh, car as well, doesn't he at some point? Who? He turns into a car at some point. Yes. He turns yeah. into a car. And there's like a rabbit, like clay. It's a Will Vinton animation. Yeah. Did you guys get Will Vinton, uh, like the claymation Christmas and stuff? Did you guys get that over in oh, your I'm neck of the woods? Sure. I'm not familiar with that. Okay. Mm. Well here there was, um, 87 88 maybe maybe later than that but will vinton is the guy that animated uh that mark twain movie uh, it's a claymation movie about mark twain what's the name of that i can't remember um but he that was he was it was him mm-hmm. and they did these holiday specials there's a halloween special and there was a, a christmas special and it came on for a few years in a row long enough to become a tradition for me and I still watch those at Christmas time because it, like I have, you know, they're on DVD. But uh, he, yeah, he did a whole set. That whole music video is in it by the, uh, Speed Demon. I think it's Speed Demon yeah. that he did. Mm-hmm. Joe Pesci's in it. Uh, maybe that's the Scorsese connection I was thinking about. Yeah. Sean Lennon, uh, John Lennon and Yoko's kid, Sean Lennon, he's in it. It's just a cool movie. And I, I'm, again, it's not good, but no yeah. one's talking about it. So. Yeah, that's cool. Awesome tree picks. Yeah, thanks a million, Heath. So that wraps up the video here, guys. Thanks a million uh, once again, Heath, for coming on. It's been really Thank fun so and much. letting Thank us you. inside your movie collection. Thank you for inviting me. No worries. Thanks, guys. If you aren't familiar with Heath's channel, all the links will be in the description. Although you must be living on the rock if you don't follow Heath on his channel. See you at midnight. <laughs> Do check it out. Thanks for watching, guys, and hopefully we'll see you on the next episode.